Now, there are a few things that I want to make sure we cover in this video. First, I want to teach you guys about surface blending, okay? I want to teach you guys about the benefits of milliput when it comes to armor plates. And I also want to talk about how to make nice central ridges like this. All right. To do so, we're going to be making one of these gorgets. So let's start with our miniature. And I have already cleared off the chest, as you can see here, the chest details, which include the uh, wings and the skull and the uh, Immortan Joe boobage. Um, and I recommend that if you're going to be doing this because you're going to be adding additional plates or um, detailing or you just want a bare chest or maybe you're going to be doing a tabard, whatever it is, I recommend that you do this work before you do the collar because inevitably you're going to slip and you're going to cut into and mark this collar. And if you do all the work to make it look like this and then you need to carve this chest detail off, well, you're going to screw this collar up, right? So take your miniature and to prep it, the veterans know, everybody that's been around here for a while, take your Q-tip, a little bit of uh, the old hand sanitizer. That's just... Alcohol and water is basically what it is. We're going to clean off all of the dust and all of the nasty finger juice and all the COVID-19 off of this piece right y'all. Okay? Mostly we're getting rid of finger oils and any production mold release that may be lingering. And this is so that our epoxy sticks as well as possible, as, as, uh, as strongly as possible. Okay? So once you have that cleaned up, get yourself mixed up a little bit of 50-50 ratio um, milliput. Like that. You're going to roll this out into a bolillo, okay? So you're gonna be fat in the middle and you have nice, nice sharp corners at the end like that. Nice tapered ends, all right? Now you're going to be taking this and you're going to stick it right like that. We want the fat part in the middle, right over the center of the chest. Now, some of the benefits to Milliput are that it blends very well. It cures fairly rapidly. It's inexpensive and it creates nice sharp corners when it's cured. It takes a lot sharper corners uh, when it's cured. There are some downsides to it. One, it's sticky when you mix it up. Um, two, it can be a little bit crumbly, and so we'll need to fix that. And uh, three, if you uh, are in California, it can give you cancer. Now, for those of us not in cancer, there are plenty of benefits. Now, once I've got that stuck on there, get some oil, and I'm going to start smoothing this in place. All right. I'm going to take a rigid flat brush with plenty of oil. One of the big differences of green stuff and milliput is that green stuff kind of takes care of itself. It's rubbery, it's elastic, it doesn't really need anything uh, to keep together. Okay, it sticks together very well. Um, milliput is crumbly. It's kind of like traditional clay, right? You see these, see how it's got a little bit of tearing already. It tears very easily. It comes apart. It crumbles. And the way to take care of that is to use lots of oil. The oil will saturate and make it wet and make it a lot easier to use. Nice and smooth. Keeps it from crumbling. Now, as I'm applying this, I'm just being kind of general. Don't need to be terribly careful. All right. I'm just kind of applying it. roughly and getting getting my shape. I'm going to move to a smaller brush so I can work under the camera a little easier. And I'm just going to start pressing this against the plastic. Now, we are in this fresh fresh stage where the milliput is new and fresh and it is perfect for sticking and applying, right? But it's also prime for blending. Look at the transitions here on this piece. You see how the milliput 
seamlessly transitions to the plastic. That is a huge benefit to Milliput. Green stuff does not do that easily. Green stuff leaves a ridge that is hard to get out and is annoying to work with, um, whereas Milliput blends really well. Even so, you're going to want to stretch this material to a place that you can hide the seam. So what I mean is you want to end your material in a place that either you're not going to see or um, it butts up against something. So if I were going to apply uh, Milliput here, I would want to tuck it all the way to this circle here um, so the transition is hidden. Okay. If you can't do that, then just make sure that you smooth it as much as you can. And again, use lots of oil um, with Milliput. Just make sure that you have everything already adhered and it stays on the outside of the, of the material. You'll find that wet Milliput, and you can also use a little water if you want, but the oil just hangs around a lot longer and is easier to work with. All right, let's move you in. So here we're just applying, we're just smoothing it out. I'm going to go a little bit deeper on this side so it transitions earlier. There we go. Just because I want it to not get so fat on the sides. Now as you're applying this, you want to make sure that you're looking from the top as well. Make sure that it is uh, not getting too thick on one side and not the other. So it looks like we have more material here than here. So I'm going to just smooth this out. Okay. In this fresh stage, it is uh, sticky, so it adheres well, and you can blend it really well, but you can't shape it really well, because as you move it, it moves almost too much, like it's, over, it's a little bit uh, dramatic. It's a little bit too soft, too reactionary. All right. Um, in fact, let me flip the camera and I'll give you an idea uh, of what I mean. So when Milliput is really soft, um, it's really mushy and very reactionary. It's sort of like if, uh, if my hand were Milliput and my other hand were uh, the brush, when it's really soft, you can push it a long way and it travels. All of that um, pressure radiates out and moves a lot of the material, more than a lot of times we want. Um, but when it cures, as it cures, it starts to resist and it starts to get harder and harder to move. And that's when we start to shape and make our edges. Now, when it gets really hard, it's almost impossible to move, and that's when we do our polishing and our, uh, our finish work, our edge work. We start trimming it. Um, it's very similar to green stuff uh, in that way, but it cures a lot faster, and when it does, um, it's harder. It's harder but more brittle, which means we can sand it uh, a little bit better as well. So as we discussed in this soft stage, the Milliput is a little bit too soft to start doing uh, apexing, which is starting those crisp, nice um, edges, all right? Um, to really illustrate the concept of apexing and making sure that we have um, an even ridge, uh, let's go to my garage and I'm going to show you an example with, uh, well, with knife sharpening, with tools. The concept of apexing can be illustrated with sharpening. Here is a gardening machete that I have sharpened and polished, and I'm going to tell you how I did that briefly and how it, rela how it relates to uh, sculpting. So I will start off um, sharpening a tool with a rough stone, and I will use the same technique on this stone that I will use throughout the rest of the tools. In essence, I will start here and move up and get the entire edge, and I will do that on the other side. Normally, to establish my geometry in this early stage, I'll do a lot of rough passes, 10 swipes, and then 10 swipes, because you're just trying to get your edge established. But as you move up through the grits, I will usually reduce the number of passes before I change sides to five passes, then five on this side, and then three passes and three on this side. By the time I get to my sandpaper, I will do one pass and then one pass and one pass, just alternating sides back and forth. The reason I'm doing that is because in early stages, you're just trying to get that geometry going. Once you have it established, however, you can't be doing so many passes on one side 
without switching to the other because what you're going to get instead of what you want, which is a nice crisp line, is you're gonna get this and you're gonna get a burr that curls over because you spend too much side too much time on one side before alternating. And then to grind that down that down, it grinds it and then you start getting this on the other side. So go ahead and refine your piece throughout the different levels of hardness, carefully establish your geometry, then start smoothing out your surfaces, and if you find that there's too much material, you can go ahead and trim that out with a knife. Just be sure to add a little bit more oil and smooth down any surfaces that you've uh, roughed up with your knife. All right, I've been working this for about an hour. We are ready for the important bit. Okay, this is the apex of the video, if you will. Now, remember what I said, that the key to apexing is consistent technique. Here's the technique. You're gonna take a brush with a sharp corner to it, a sharp square, zoom you in a bit. You're going to put it flat against your edge and establish that edge. Once it's nice and flat, you're gonna run it from thick to thin, okay? Just run it thick to thin, just like that, okay? Now, as this gets more cured, to really get this sharp, sharp corner, we're gonna start doing it just like I do with sharpening a tool. We are going to do one side and then the next, because if we don't, remember that we're gonna have one edge or one side rolling over onto the other. It's not what we want. So let's go from the center, find our flat, just like that, and start pressing it. See how it rolled a little bit? It's not quite so even. We want it nice and even. And if you can't really tell if you're even or not, make sure you're checking from the top. You see how this is kind of bowed a little bit? It's not quite so flat. So I'm going to actually do the technique looking from the top now. So I'm just gonna start here, make sure it's flat, move it that way. See how it's nice and pointy now? If your material starts to come up over the edge of the plastic, you can tuck it like this. Come from the front and just tuck it over the top and kind of smooth it nice and gentle. Don't worry too much about the top here, as long as it's pretty close. Once this is cured, we're gonna be trimming it anyway. We're gonna be cutting it with our knife. But the more that you can polish smooth while it's still workable and soft, the better. Okay, so one side and the next side. You also wanna check your centering. Make sure that this right here, this uh, point, is centered over the center of his rib cage. Does that make sense? Now, Another word on blending. See how some of the plastic is starting to come out underneath the uh, milliput? That's fine, that's not a big deal. Uh, the more gray and dissolved your epoxy looks, right? This is very yellow, this is starting to turn gray, the better. That means that it is starting to dissolve into, or rather disappear into the layer beneath it. And so it's starting to be blended. You could really blend um, milliput out in the middle of this gray plastic and it would blend perfectly flush. Once you painted it, you wouldn't even notice. That's the great uh, thing about milliput. Um, it does have its limitations and we will go over that, I think in a comparison video with green stuff directly. But for this, this is a great way for you guys to get familiar with milliput if you haven't. Um, it creates nice sharp corners. It trims really well. It sands really well and it blends very, very well. So let's keep going. I'm going to check the top here. I think this side, yep, is a little bit proud. So we're gonna go this way. Ooh, yeah, look at that, that was a good one. That was a good one. Now we'll go on this side. Just keep polishing. And as this cures, keep working it. I'm seeing a lot of guys post their stuff and they're wondering um, they're frustrated in what's going on, what's wrong. Um, there's a lot of dudes out there sculpting, and they are you're you're jumping the gun. You're you're starting to sculpt too early in too early, too early of a stage, or you're not waiting until the proper stage 
um, or you're not working it long enough. To get nice, consistent, smooth surfaces like this, for example, you've got to work it up through the cure stages. Because again, if I push really hard on one side when this is soft, it's going to shift all this material this way. There's no resistance. But as it cures and gets harder, it will resist me, and all of my force will be focused into a soft, into a a, a smaller area, meaning that all of that is being pressed into detail instead of shifting all the material. Okay, and you're not going to get that. You're not going to understand what I mean unless you wait and you work through the stages. Okay, so keep polishing this in that same way, consistent, just soft, gentle sweep, all the way back, just like that. And as this gets to a harder level, I'm going to be doing a consistent, same angle, same technique. One side, then the next, and the other side, then the next, until it comes out nice and even. Alright, so keep working that until it's cured. I will come back when this is cured, and we're going to go over some last tips about sanding and trimming. Now that this has cured completely, we can talk about some finishing processes. So, as I mentioned, Milliput is really good for sanding and after trimming. It is harder and not as elastic as green stuff. But it can be a little bit brittle, which is why we added that oil to it, right? And that kept it all together while it cured. However, with all that oil, there's going to be some residue. So, make sure after you trim that you get... All that oil off as well. So let's start by getting some oil on our knife just so things glide nice and smooth. If you need to trim up any of these areas you can start by leveling out the collar. And I'm gonna put the flat of my blade right. I'm gonna put that bevel to the edge. I'm gonna put that right on top and just just let it kind of glide over nice and straight and flat okay and the point of this is to hopefully make the uh, collar all one flat level all right you can do that with a knife see that little sliver these little slivers of of uh, milliput just coming right off. You can also sand it really easily. Now green stuff does sand as well, but because it's so elastic, it really wants to just stretch and it resists um, resists the file quite a bit. Whereas milliput dries like a traditional clay and can be sanded nice and easy. From the top, you just want to make sure that you're level all the way. You know, you're flush with your file, and you just take that back. Make sure everything is nice and level. Now, if you're going to alter the face of the gorget here or here, then you're going to want to make sure that you are filing from thick to thin, just like we ran our brush. Okay, so you would just go along here. You're going to do one pass and one pass, one pass and one pass, because you don't want to ruin this nice edge. Now, if you find that your neck or your uh, gorget, excuse me, that the apex is not quite even with the center of the ribs, you can also move it just a little bit. You could just cut a little bit or use the side of your knife and just kind of scrape it a little bit. Until that, until that's right where you want it. So, Milliput <clears throat> is great for trimming and filing, making little cuts and details. It's also great for drilling. It uh, takes drilling a lot more than, uh, a lot better than green stuff. It's a lot more stable, like we found out in the um, previous video with uh, Marnius, where we uh, filled the body. There you go. That's looking pretty clean. Yeah, it's a little bit little bit crooked. You see that? How it's a little bit crooked? Let's see if we can even that up. 
And if there's any little imperfections, you can also scrape them with your knife, clean them up. I'm going to come on this side. But the better you are at apexing when this is um, soft, the better, the less of this work you will have to do, and the cleaner and smoother your ridge will be. That's looking pretty good. All right, last step before you move on, make sure that you get a little bit of alcohol. And you're going to clean up all of that oil that you had left. Because again, remember that we gotta get rid of it, so anything we sculpt on top will stick to the plastic. That oil needs to be dealt with. Okay. You can kind of get the dry side and just dry it on out. So there we go, guys. All done, nice and clean. Hope that was helpful for you. This same process can be used for you know, shins or chests. I'm going to be using the same process uh, for the chest here. I would encourage you all to give it a try. It's a good way to get familiar with uh, the characteristics of Milliput and the limitations and also its strengths. If you have any questions, get a hold of me on Discord or through Instagram. Those are the two fastest and uh, surest ways. Also, email. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next one.